Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video and in this video we'll be going through the GWS vs Richmond game in which again another really good tip for me. Um, I think in the, I think I tipped Richmond by 18 and they ended up winning by 19 but wow, wow it was close. At one point I think um, GWS might have even gone up by two scores and then Richmond I think kicked the last four goals of the game or something like that in a game that had a delayed start due to uh, um, snake it was it was quite funny that um, it got delayed I think by about 35 minutes um, and it was it was an absolute uh, sweat fest out there being I think it was 33 at Blacktown for this game um, and yeah it was just Sydney weather is uh, finally ticked over into summer weather <laughs> as I think it was in the like in about the third quarter you just started seeing girls just go down like flies with them um, with cramp and injuries and I think you see I think there was two or three there might have even been here like one or two hamstrings done and stuff like that just through uh, cramping and stuff like that but anyway before we get into the video remember to like and subscribe turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload and let's get into the video so as you can see here Parker went absolutely nuts two goals 102 but I believe she's injured I believe she got injured late in the game. I believe it was in the fourth quarter, as you can see with a 15 in the last. I know she went eight, only 18 in the second, but um, I think she was injured for a large portion of that uh, last quarter from memory. And yeah, one to definitely look at and just be wary of. I just want to look at Goldsworthy, actually, now looking at Goldsworthy. Uh, she's going to be one that we're going to have to probably glance. Uh, look at again because um, I'm going to look at her role because she probably had a midfield role um, let's just see what's what's up with Goldsworthy as I'm sometimes you just see stuff and Goldsworthy's score doesn't line up really from what I can see with a forward role so she might have been on ball uh, let's just see Goldsworthy um, it says she played half forward and I'll need to see the, the splits here can, can you give me the splits um, we see here the Melbourne game. Um, she played defensive 50. Um, she played more of a midfield role, it looks like, with 59% CBAs. So Goldsworthy is one that I think we need to just watch out for. Just look at her stats when they filter through the CBAs and stuff like that and her heat map, etc. Because she might have the role. And having the role and having such time, high time on ground, if she has 60% CBAs, just look at what Morrison is doing. Um, and this was against a Richmond side that are pretty decent. So, um, and let me just bring up who they play next. I know that GWS aren't the greatest side. GWS, GWS play Adelaide next. And then they play North. So, two of the toughest matchups. Then they play the Eagles. Um, then they play St Kilda. So, you see, they start to go on a run here where they're going to... And then they play Carlton. Carlton, I can't really get a read on at the moment. And then they play... Who do they play here? They play Gold Coast, who looked all right. And then they finish off the season with Port. So once they get through the next two weeks, you can start to look at if there are any GWS players that um, could potentially be there. But um, just Goldsworthy is one to just put on the uh, watch list at the moment. Um, hmm. I'm just looking at my uh, my uh, what I did my trade targets and the players that have played so far actually done all right. Just looking, glancing over, uh, but Goldsworthy is probably going to be on that uh, trade targets video next week given her performance. Um, Hicks sixty nine, Sharika sixty nine, Evans sixty six didn't really get too involved to be honest. Evans, um, except for the last quarter, she uh, came alive in the last and got twenty five to get up to sixty six which is a fair effort um, in the heat. And there wasn't, she don't, I don't think she took too many marks, five marks, three tackles. So I uh, would like to see her just get another three or four touches. I think that will balloon her score out, especially because I think that will mean that she might have another mark or another tackle and that will get, um, get her up towards that 80, 85 range that we need. But a 69 as a defender isn't going to kill um, as you can see here, looking at, if we look at the defenders and we look at the round points, you got an 86 that, uh, let's see here, 15% people own Amy Smith. So need to probably look at that and just see. Um, Gunjaka is owned by 3%. Emerson is owned by 3%. Sheeran, uh, Sheehan or Sheeran, 
um, 19, so she's highly owned, Bresnahan, um, Richardson, 1% owned, and Lynch, 11% owned, um, 12% owned for Lynch, but Lynch hasn't put up that many good performances anyway. Um, Hicks, Erie, Everest, O'Driscoll, Odr- and then you come down to Evans. So if you really look at it, and Amy Smith is sort of uh, not really done the performances, so Evans is still outplaying her across the year. Um, so I don't even think that's that bad of a performance, um, and I think Ev- um, Evans is fine. Bar 60, Eva 48, Dalton, Mowbray, Lister 40, so I don't think there is much of a role there for Lister. I believe she might even be a defender. Yeah, a defender with 40. She's just not... Something isn't going right there with her, even though she might have the role. So I think we got more and more time to wait um, if she does have that role for her to kickstart um, because she just hasn't yet. She obviously missed a game and then hasn't um, come off really strong in the in this game. Garnet, and then you come down to girls that don't really matter. And Davies, um, 13, that was honestly poor. Um, I don't know how you score 13 as a Ruckman. Um, she did give away three free kicks, but even if she didn't give away those free kicks, it's still only a 22. So yeah, she just... 48 time on ground doesn't help at all. Low time on ground. I mean, the lowest of her side. Um, I don't know whether the heat just got her or something, but yeah, just a really poor um, effort from her. And glad that I didn't have her on field. Let's just put it like that, because there would be some people that had her on field, I'm guessing... A very few, but some people would have been probably stuck with her on field, and that would kill their round basically. Uh, a Brennan eighty five, Conti eighty four. So Conti actually did ask for Riddell, but I think the in the future Riddell had such a tough matchup, and this wasn't the toughest matchup for Conti. And Conti had a lot of, um, if you look here, thirty one th- um third, um, she just had a lot of tough. Uh, I mean, get out of jail um, marks here. She had four marks in the end, and all of them were just her in about five metres of space. Um, and, yeah, so... And she even kicked a goal as well to get there. So she won't regularly kick a goal, I don't think, and she won't have high non-disposal numbers. So I think this is fine, her going five up above Riddell this week. Um, look at the long term, I guess. Um, Seymour, 81. She- Sheeran, 78. And then you come down to a lot of girls that just didn't really do much, to be honest with you. That seems the way that um, that Richmond are playing at the moment, that they're going to have a lot of girls just go 40s, 50s, and 60s. And you do need to switch from the men's scoring to the women's scoring in the sense that they're going to be 20, 30, 40 below in most areas. Um, except for like Bowers and stuff like that, who seems to score more than the men's. Um, there's a couple that score more than the men's, but like outside of those top like eight or so, um, eight girls, then it dramatically drops off to about a minus twenty, I think on average twenty five on average to the men's scoring. That's just because of the, um, I guess the nature of the game, and um the lo- the longer scoring uh longer um higher scoring as well as the uh, longer quarters. Those are the reasons why there's more men's uh, fantasy scoring as well as the clock running sort of kills uh, the women's game. I think if the clock didn't run, you'd actually see um, these girls, even though the quarters are longer, if you saw the clock didn't run and actually stopped, um, I think you'd see that scoring would be up another 5% potentially. So that is pretty much the game. I needed to get a little bit more time out of this video. But anyway, that is the game. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks, guys. Goodbye.